Herb Lightman. He's been making these little movies since he was nine. You know, with the home movie camera his dad left behind. Take it out. But they're really something. Yeah, real bad. So here's what I was wondering. <laughs> I can do that. Steven Spielberg. So what if the world's very first fan of Star Wars was from right here in our own backyard? And we're not talking about Jake, but he did have the chance to chat with this guy about his new movie. Yeah, this is, real, this is a really great story because uh -huh. so many people love to say, well, you know, I love Star Wars before right? it was cool. But what if you could say, I loved Star Wars <laughs> before it was even in theaters? Ooh. Patrick Reed Johnson's new true story, it's a coming of age film. It's called 52577, which if you didn't know, is the day that Star Wars was released in theaters. Okay. He presents the very solid argument that he was Star Wars fan number one. Because when Patrick was an aspiring filmmaker in his teenage years, for him here in our own backyard, he took the trip to Hollywood over spring break, where he was given the opportunity to see the inner workings and an early cut of a production of a little space movie wow. no one had ever heard of called Star Wars. Now that experience was a watershed moment for Johnson, who returned to the Chicagoland area telling all of his friends about this new movie soon to hit theaters, mm -hmm. and of course no one knew what he was talking about. However, it would go on to shape the storyteller and the filmmaker he became today, which is the story told in his new movie 52577. And I spoke with Johnson about capturing that moment in history, both movie history and his own. Trying to maintain what was real was it was incredibly important for a lot of reasons. A new and golden age lies upon us. Genesee Theater, 3 p.m. Come on, get to go, guys. Funny thing is, is you know everybody thinks that because you know Gary Kurtz determined because of the events in this film that I'm quote unquote fan one, um, that that makes me the biggest fan or the wisest fan or the smartest fan or the most knowledge whatever. I and none of those things are true. What is this movie about? <laughs> I'll have you now. <laughs> when Star Wars finally did come out, and I, you know, I'm, I told you, I told you, haha, you know, um, I saw it 28 times in the first 30 days of release, right? Star Wars was a catalyst for me. It was a thing that said, you can do this. Because the guys that were working on it said, you can do this. We're making this out of things you find lying around your garage, man. Just get a camera and start making movies. What do you think, that one of these movies is gonna end up being seen by anyone other than you, me, and your mom? Could, could the, your story happen today? One of the great differences between when I started and now is that there are millions more people who believe they can, and they believe it with scant evidence that it's true, but just because they want to, or because they're all telling each other, I can do better than Kathy Kennedy, oh yeah? Give it a try. What I do think is the democratization of technology by the fact that my iPhone that we're that we're doing this on, there are you can you can shoot a feature film, a really good feature film with an iPhone, no question. And it and you don't have to start screaming, yeah, but you need all the studio lights and you need this and that. You don't need all of that. You don't. There are amazing, beautiful, brilliant films being made by people who have an iPhone, some lenses, and a bunch of dedicated people and they have a story. To everybody else, movies are something to do when you're tired of real life. To you, real life is something to do when you're tired of watching movies. I love that quote. Yeah. 52577 available on video on demand now.